Welcome traders to Tick Mills weekly live market and trade analysis with me, Patrick Munley. Um, just before we get going here, if I can just do a quick audio check, if you can hear me loud and clear, and you can see the Tick Mill welcome screen, if you could just type a Y in the chat box, and we will uh, we'll get going. So before jumping into today's discussion, uh, as always, we want to uh, adhere to the risk disclaimer. Most importantly, um, the nature of our chat today is the idea that um, the views and opinions expressed by me are solely representative of me. They are not indicative of those held by either Tickmill UK Limited or Tickmill Europe Limited. So with that out of the way, uh, quick introduction to myself for those who are here for the first time. My name is Patrick Munley. After I graduated from university, I joined a city PLC consulting firm. And after a couple of years learning the ropes, I left with some colleagues and went on to co-found and successfully exit a consulting startup post-merger in late 2004. I then moved on to explore my passion for markets with some capital to play with and some time in my hands. I started day trading or more appropriately day gambling the S&P 500, and after some beginner's luck, I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, my beginner's luck ran out, and as the market phase changed, I began to average down into what were losing positions, giving back all the gains, and ultimately experiencing a six-figure hit on my personal capital. Uh, to say this was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. I really had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the markets. So I decided to get serious about trading and sort out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period of about 18 months, two years. It was a period during which I upped not just my technical game in terms of researching and developing a strategy that suited my personality, I extensively back and forward tested this strategy and developed a rigorous risk management approach to underpin it. But most importantly, during this period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably the most important watershed shift for me was moving from being a highly goal orientated uh, individual focused on financial gains to becoming purely process orientated. And so what does that mean? Well, it actually means that I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and you have that professional trading mindset, you understand the true nature of trading being a numbers game in which you're simply playing the probabilities you lose the emotional investment in that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or even a group of trades. My focus is on the next hundred trades because I know if I focus on excellence in execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Since 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through my managed account service, delivering annual positive returns. And you can see the performance data on the screen. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Since 2010, I've personally mentored over 100 private traders of all experience levels from complete novices to former CME floor traders in developing the technical and mental skills to read consistent returns from the markets. I've also consulted to numerous brokers and trading education brands, contributing written content, webinars, and live presentation content on a range of topics from market analysis to trading strategy development and execution. In addition to my fund management and private mentoring, I'm also the resident market expert for Tickmill, uh, providing daily market and trade analysis. And you can access that through the Tickmill blog. You can uh, put your email in there and you will receive those updates direct to your inbox. My other, I guess, passion project is as head of trading and trader education for fxcareerswap.com. At fxcareerswap, we offer development and funding to retail trading talents. If it's Chris, we don't just develop retail traders' uh, market and trading strategy knowledge, we work on mindset development and through a structured program that culminates in managing the firm's capital at zero personal financial risk on a profit share basis. And for those that are interested in learning more about FX Chris, what you can see on the screen at the moment, the telephone number for the desk in London. And uh, if you are looking for further information, you could email them as well. And the guys on the desk in London 
we'll, uh, we'll get back to you in a timely fashion. So that, uh, that gives you a flavor of where I'm coming from. And now I want to jump into the charts. We've got a bunch of charts to run through today. Um, what I'll do is I'll go through the charts that I've earmarked here. Um, and then at the end, I'll open up for, for a brief Q&A. And if you have any questions, you can either type them into the chat box or, um, or I can unmute your mic. And, uh, and if there's anything to do with the content we discussed today or anything else to do with trading, I'm happy to, uh, happy to answer. So we're going to start looking at the, the equity markets, the risk, risk uh, broad risk barometers, I guess. So we're looking at the S&P 500 here. And important to note that we are sitting at or just below at current prices, this trend line from last March's low, the, uh, the post-pandemic low, so to speak. We made a fourth test of this trend line and we're starting to erode some support here. Um, if we take out this orange line, which is the projected weekly range support currently sitting at 37.78 then I'm looking for an equality objective so equal legs versus this swing structure here to put us down into a test of 37.33 from there I'll be watching for bullish reversal patterns to set long positions ultimately looking for a move up for through the 4000 level in terms of the S&P now we might not get down to this area uh, we may get a close today back through the trend line and um, certainly we want to see a close back through the weekly pivot here. The weekly pivot comes in at 38.50 to, um, to get constructive uh, before we test this equality objective. But for now, my, my sense is that uh, as we, we're, we're taking out this trend line, I think we're going to test 37.33. I'm watching the bullish reversal patterns, the long positions targeting move up through the, uh, the 4,000 level in terms of the S&P 500. Now, if for whatever reason we don't uh, see sufficient demand into the market here at 37.33, then I'll be looking for a move down uh, through the 36.65 to the monthly predicted range support down to 36.19, which is also the 161 FIB extension of this structure here. So we could then see this type of pattern develop. Um, I'd be, I, wouldn't be, uh, I wouldn't be looking for immediate move there uh, from that level to all time highs. I think we could probably have to do a bit more sideways price action to build um, momentum for another run. But certainly I would anticipate that we'd see some, some demand come into the market on a test of that area if 37.33 fails. Dow Jones. Um, I think we are, I could get a similar story here really to the S&P. I'd like to see us pull back into the 30,475 area, which again is that trend line. Third test from the March lows. Watch for bullish reversal patterns to get a retest of the ascending uh, projected trend line resistance, 32,343 en route, I think then to a test of the 33,000 level. The DAX. <clears throat> trading, uh, looking for a test now of its ascending trend line resistance. So I'm looking for a move up to 14,400 here, certainly as we trade above the weekly pivot at 13,842. Watch for bearish reversal patterns there. We've got a bunch of um, divergence developing here in the psych indicator. And so whilst we have that divergence, any test up into this area, I'll be looking to fade on reversal patterns ultimately looking for a retest of the weekly range support 13,726 and then monthly range support which will coincide with this trend line then from the uh, March lows for the DAX there. So 13,333 would be the next area to watch on the downside where we could see some, uh, some buyers step back into the market. Finally, in terms of the equity indexes, the Nikkei, Nikkei uh, traded just shy of the target zone I was looking for, this 31,100 zone. Uh, we've pulled back, we're sitting at that internal trend line support. If we can get a bullish reversal pattern here, we could still see one more push higher into this ascending trend line resistance and the monthly range resistance coming at 3188. But if we don't get back into this channel uh, today or, or certainly by the close of tomorrow, then I think we can be starting to think of uh, a, a corrective pattern already underway. And I'm looking for this type of structure to play out. So something like this, and then see if bulls are gonna step back in at the 27,245 area, setting up a move into the top side of the channel. Oops, on that. 
Um, dollar. So this is the equal weighted dollar index. This is the dollar versus the Aussie, the yen, uh, sterling and the euro. I think, although we've seen some constructive moves in the dollar of late, um, driven by the yields, and we'll look at the 10-year yield in a minute, I think we're in a period here where we're probably going to go sideways for a bit. Uh, we've got, and most importantly for today, and really for this week, uh, obviously we have payrolls tomorrow, but tonight at 5.30 UK time, uh, Fed Chair Powell is going to be on the wires. He's doing a sit-down interview with the Wall Street Journal. And I would imagine, or the, the, the view is, that he probably will try and walk back some of this, uh, this strength that we've seen in the yields. So uh, looking at... Uh, you know, looking at front front end rates. I mean, if he does, then I think this that will prompt this sideways move to correct further in terms of the um, in terms of the dollar index. So see, this is the equal. Uh, sorry, this is the broad based dollar index. So uh, versus six pairs. So I think you can see here we could get up into these prior highs, ninety one sixty five, and then again I think we can correct. We're basically replicating. I talked about this last week, so I'm not going to labour it again, but you can see this sideways action that we had into the back end of last year. I think we're doing a similar thing over here and I'd anticipate that um, we've got a bit of work to do in terms of just corrective action before ultimately um, we set up for the next leg of downside in terms of the dollar index. So something up into this area. And then I'm ultimately looking for a move down to test that 8750 which is the uh, the long term downside objective for the dollar index on this uh, on this leg lower? So um, still think we can do it. We can see a bit more upside in the dollar, and then some sideways uh, before lower is the is the view there. Ten year yields. Um, we saw a big spike up through the one hundred and fifty, and we're now correcting that move. I think, and this if if Powell does come out tonight and uh, and talks down. Uh, these, these yield expectations, then certainly we get back down to this 135 area. Depending upon how much jawboning he does and the, the strength of what he's saying, it could be that we go, uh, we take a, a deeper move back here before ultimately I think we're heading up to, to make a test of, uh, of the 165 area in terms of yields. And then I, from there again, I think we can see um, more correction in terms of, in terms of yields. Metals, so uh, gold sitting right at this uh, projected sending trend line support. We've got weekly range support just below us at 1690. I'm looking for a pot higher here in terms of gold to get back into this six, uh, this 1760 area. And then from there, I think we complete this second leg of this big uh, ABC. Let me draw that in for you so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So we have a B high here at 1690. And I'm looking for a C low at 1653. Uh, you will see there as well that that will complete a, uh, a nice interim uh, five wave pattern here. And then from there, I think we can see a more meaningful correction in gold. So um, from this 1650 area, we could then be looking for a bounce back up into the yearly pivot from below, so back up into the 1800 level. So I'm paying very close attention to one, uh, the potential for a bullish reversal here today uh, to set initial interim tactical long positions. Um, and then I'll see how we trade up into this 1770 area, but the area that I'm really most interested in in watching for a reaction and uh, a more meaningful corrective phase is going to be from this 1653 quality objective to the downside. So. Uh, paying very close attention to that in terms of gold. Silver a little bit stronger, sitting on its trend line support, third test. So I'm watching for bullish reversal patterns here. And I think what we could be then thinking about in terms of silver, obviously we had the, the Reddit crowd uh, trying to uh, run silver up and they got a pretty nasty shot. But um, what I think we've got then is an ascending triangle pattern developing, whereby uh, if we hold here, we have bullish reversal patterns, I think we get back up and retest this 30 level and ultimately break out here to the upside in terms of silver. So very, uh, very interesting where we close today in terms of silver, if we can get back through the five period VWAP, uh, 2653 will be a bullish reversal pattern for, uh, for my trading strategy. And, uh, and I'll be looking to get long silver, certainly for a test of back through the 30, and then uh, thinking about higher prices in terms of silver in the coming weeks. Crude oil, 
We've, uh, we've seen the initial pullback in terms of crude. We talked about this 63 level in previous sessions. I'm now looking for a test of this internal ascending trendline support, which will put us into a 58.70 zone. And from there, I will be watching for bullish reversal patterns. We've got the weekly pivot. We've got the uh, daily, uh, sorry, the weekly range support, projected range support coming in there. So I think if we can get a bullish reversal pattern in and around this zone, uh, look to be long targeting a move up to the uh, the primary ascending trend line resistance up towards the seventy dollars barrel mark in terms of uh, crude oil, copper. So we uh, we, we tested up into the four thirty. We're seeing a three way corrective move now. So if we can get a green close today back through the five period VWAP, I think copper could be set here to uh, to make a test of projected. Ascending trend line resistance up as high as uh, as 457 is the next upside objective. Uh, certainly, we've retested here the monthly pivot and found some pretty strong demand. And we've also retested this uh, ascending trend line resistance uh, from above here, and that's where we're seeing this demand come in. So watch for a close back through um, one, uh, sorry, 413 area for long positions targeting move up into 455. Bitcoin. I talked about this um, at some length over the weeks. Uh, where I, what I think we're doing now is we're essentially replicating the corrective phase that we saw um, at the beginning of this year. And so, to my mind, we're, we're doing a bit of back and filling here in terms of uh, in terms of Bitcoin. Ultimately, what I'd really like to see is a test of this 40, uh, 42 area before then um, seeing the next leg to the upside. Um, it might be that we have to do a bit more sideways consolidation first, but um, certainly any pullback into this 42 zone that sees bullish reversal patterns, we've got this ascending trend line support coming in here just below 41.33. I think that's the next entry point in terms of um, in terms of Bitcoin. I'm holding it from 10,950, which was a setup we looked at in one of these live analysis sessions uh, back in October. But uh, if we can uh, if we can hold that 42 on a test, then I think we've got scope to run up. Certainly, getting a move towards the seventy thousand uh, dollars price target there in terms of uh, Bitcoin. This is the dollar yuan. We're sitting right at that, or just above that weekly trend line support at the six forty level. And like I said last week, I think we've got a bit of back and fill here, a bit of sideways down. Maybe we test six forty two again. Ultimately, I'd be looking for, um, for that area to hold and for us to see higher prices. I think we get a test up into the yearly pivot here at some point, um, maybe heading into the summer 670 area. There were a lot of op there's a lot of options activity into the back end of last year, um, looking for a 670 test into the, um, the middle half of this year. So I think that's the objective versus, uh, versus this area. So if we can get, uh, if this RSI stochastic can roll back over, get back below, the 20 level without price breaking through these current lows, then uh, I think that sets up an excellent opportunity on the upside in terms of the dollar yuan. Dollar yen, heavily correlated to the yield story, obviously. So I've got an area that I'm going to be watching uh, later today or into this evening with, uh, with power coming up. Just ahead, really, of that 108 area, we've got projected uh, weekly range resistance at 107.75 projected uh, trend line resistance coming in there on 780. If we get through there, then the if we don't see any bearish reversal patterns here, then um, and it's going to be this major trend line resistance. 109 is going to be the area uh, to pay attention to for, uh, for a potential opportunity to, to fade some of this, uh, this dollar yen strength. Swissy, looking for 93 now. And, and again, I'll be watching the bearish reversal patterns here to set short positions. I think we, we get some back and fill then, maybe back down to this 90.50, or we've got <coughs> monthly range support down to 90.20, and then we'll see if, uh, if buyers are going to step back in here. But we've got quite, uh, quite a decent clip here in a short period of time, and so I'd be looking to, to fade this area, looking for a pullback in terms of the dollar Swiss. Euro. Um, whilst we hold 122.47 as resistance, I think we need to probably take a look at the equality objective now. So this is our A, B, and we get a C. 118.50, monthly projected range support down to 118.26. So any reversal patterns in this area, I think then 
uh, sets the stage for the next leg higher in terms of the euro. And I'd be thinking in terms of the top side of this channel up through uh, 125 as the next upside objective uh, for the euro. Euro yen, looking for another leg higher here to test the 161 extension of this swing here. So I'm looking for 130, 35. We've got that ascending trend line resistance, get some divergence going here on the momentum study. And then I think we see a uh, three-way corrective move back into 127 before setting the stage for a move up to test the, the 132 target in terms of the euro yen. So today, over, well, say tomorrow, watch this 130.35 area. I think that's gonna be an opportunity on the short side. Euro Swiss, I posted this on the blog this morning, came just shy of my target. I'm looking for a, a 111.59, 111.60. This is, this is yearly projected range of support. You can see earlier uh, in January, we came down just shy of yearly projected um, range support. We've traded straight up into the resistance area. So I think we, this is a, going to be a shorting opportunity here for a move back to test this, uh, this 109 area as support. So watching for bearish reversal patterns here um, to get in on the short side, looking for 109. Euro sterling has, uh, has held that weekly trend line support. We're doing a bit of back and filling here. And so I'd look for a move down into this 8560 area, watch for bullish reversal patterns, long positions then. And I think we get a move up into this 88, nine, well, 89 level, which is uh, the yearly pivot. I think we retest that uh, from the from below is, uh, is what I'm watching Euro Sterling. Euro Aussie. Um, if we can hold this range, uh, weekly range support here, 154. And I think uh, we get up into 159 and then I'd like to see a pullback to set up an inverse head and shoulders pattern here. So we're watching 155, 60s. And then I think we can get a move up into projected monthly range resistance at 160, 85. Uh, so keeping an eye on the Euro Aussie. Euro CAD is sitting right at uh, this trend channel support. Uh, could get another touch lower here. I'd like to see it test 151, 60. And then bullish reversal patterns. And I think we can get a move back up into 154.25 is what I'm watching there in terms of the Euro CAD. Euro Kiwi, similar idea really to the, uh, the Euro Aussie looking for an inverse head and shoulders pattern to develop here. We can get a uh, break out of this channel, uh, test re uh, weekly range resistance, uh, 168.30, then a pullback to test this prior trend line resistance as support from above giving us an inverse head and shoulders pattern. So 165.90 area, then I think we can target 171 on the upside. Sterling Aussie, uh, got an equality objective at the 83 level, 183, um, looking for a break through the, uh, the monthly pivot here to, to set that move up to, to 183 in terms of the Sterling Aussie. And I think we, uh, we get another pullback into this uh, 177 area. So watching to see if we can get some continuation here and uh, long positions there looking for a test of 183 in the Sterling Aussie. Sterling, um, whilst we hold this uh, 140 areas resistance now, I'm actually looking for a move to test this 137.30, 137.50 area, uh, trend line support just below 136.70. Any bullish reversal patterns in here, I think, is uh, a great opportunity on the long side. Certainly looking for a move back through the prior highs at 142, uh, looking 145 as, uh, as the next um, target there. But really what I'm looking for is this equal legs target to, um, to play out in terms of sterling. So I'll just drag this across. You can see the, the, the target, the measured move target for this uh, for this sequence is actually 147. So plenty of scope there if we can get this set up back in around this 137.50 area to play for the, the test of the ascending trend line resistance and the equality objective at 147. Sterling yen, similar deal really to the euro yen. I'm looking for a potential double top here. Uh, we're getting some nice momentum divergence. And so as we get up into this area, three-way correction back into test 147.34 as support for higher, ultimately looking for, uh, for a test of the ascending 
trend line resistance at 153 then in terms of sterling yen. Sterling Swiss has traded up into the top side of this channel, uh, potential for a double top here. And um, we've got some momentum divergence. And so if we hold this high, look for corrected move back into 126 to uh, bullish reversal pattern set long positions. And then I think we've got scope to, uh, to trade up into monthly range resistance up into 133s there in terms of sterling Swiss after we broke out from this uh, long basin pattern here at 120, uh, 123 area. Sterling Kiwi, looking for a test of channel support here, 188.90, 189. And I think that would be an opportunity on the long side then to target uh, 197. Nothing to do in this chop here at the moment. The Aussie, getting a bit of a pullback here. Uh, we're, we've eroded this trend line support from the March lows. So what I'm looking for now is a three way correction into this 76 level. And from there, watch the bullish reversal patterns. And my target for the, the upside move now is going to be this test of the 8230, which is the uh, leading diagonal. This should see, this probably terminates the move then for a while. And we have to do a, some more deeper corrective work in terms of the Aussie. But uh, yeah, pay attention to how we trade at, at the 76 level for long positions targeting 82. Aussie yen. So whilst we hold 8384, watch for a test of the ascending trend line support, 8075 in the pivotal. And then I think we're gonna move up into the 8739 area is gonna be the next upside objective in terms of the Aussie yen. So uh, three-way correction into trend line support, bullish reversal patterns targeting 8750. Aussie Swiss, similar story, looking for a test of the trend line support here, 6935 prior highs and watch for bullish reversal patterns and then target 7480s. Aussie CAD has broken the trend line support here. So we might be looking to do some sideways action here um, in terms of the Aussie CAD, but uh, certainly moves back into these prior highs at the um, 96 handle, uh, 96.60, watch for bullish reversal patterns. And I think we can target uh, certainly projected Monthly range resistance above 100. Was it Kiwi? Looking for a test and failure at the 107.69 to set shorts again, um, targeting this trend line support 105.70s before we potentially break higher there in terms of the Aussie Kiwi. Kiwi sitting nicely. I, I had a shot at this on the long side um, yes, oh, Monday. Um, I've got stopped out, small, uh, small loss there, but I'm watching now if we can hold this trend line support and get these bullish reversal patterns, I think we can take out the prior highs and we can get a move up to 75.30. So keep an eye on how we trade here at this, uh, this trend line support. Projected weekly range support coming in just below 71.60s. This is a pivotal area and I think uh, an opportunity to do something on the, the long side there with the Kiwi, Kiwi Yen. Uh, looking for a test of the ascending trend line support now, something around this 7640 area. Uh, opportunity then on the long side, targeting the uh, projected monthly range resistance 8128. Kiwi Swiss, not, uh, not such an attractive setup there at the moment. I'll, uh, I'll pass on that one. Similar story with the Kiwi CAD. Swiss Yen sitting at the trend line support. If we can get a, a bullish reversal um, today that takes out uh, the five period view up on a closing basis. So 116.69 will be the closing area to watch. And I think we can target 119.69. Uh, CAD yen, last but not least. So what I'm looking for here with the CAD yen is a test of this ascending trend line resistance and a fade there. So watch for bearish reversal patterns to get a, a short position going, looking for a test of the 8250 ascending trend line support before we attempt another leg to the upside. So uh, covered a bunch of charts there. I hope you can get a, a sense of what it is I'm watching. Certainly want to pay attention this evening, seventh, uh, sorry, 5.30 um, UK time for Fed Chair Powell will be on all the news wires. And, uh, and let's see what sort of impact he has on the, on the rates perspective at the moment. But as you can see with these charts, and this is often the case that when we have these type of events that you'll see that a lot of prices are, are at or just below or above pivotal levels. 
And what tends to happen is the, the technicals lead and then you get this fundamental catalyst to drive the patterns. So pay close attention to, um, to the comments from Powell on how the market responds and some of these prices where we close tonight could, uh, could give some decent setups. So with that said, are there any questions? If you don't have a question, it's equally useful if you type an N in the chat box so that I know we're, uh, we're all on the same page. Okay, so if there aren't any questions, I'm gonna wrap this session up here, guys, and we will uh, reconvene at the same time next week. Thanks very much and have a great weekend.